Hello, my name is Jian Yang. I'm an analytical chemist with FDA's Office of Testing and Research. In this presentation, I wanted to share with you my thoughts on the progress, pitfalls, and prospects of analytical methods for lytosoamine analysis. The lytosoamine analytes of analytical methods have been expanded greatly to not only include simple lytosoamines, but also cover more complicated lytosoamine drug substance-related impurities, as well as certain lytocyte agents. Simple lytosoamines, such as NDMA and NDEA, were the first lytosoamines discovered in pharmaceuticals and were the focus of early method development. These lytosoamines have been well studied in areas such as the food industry, environmental science, and Experience and knowledge from these areas greatly facilitated method development in pharmaceuticals. Later, it became clear that lytosomy impurities were not limited to simple ones. Amine-containing APIs or their related impurities can also form lytosomines, thereby causing safety and quality concerns. For example, berylicline, a drug for smoking sensation, is a secondary amine and it can form a lytosoviralicline impurity. These relatively larger and more complex lytosoamines require a greatly expanded scope of current analytical methods. With the increasing need of root cause investigations, the lytocyte agents contributing to lytosoamine formation, such as lytrite present in excipients, also became of interest for analysis. The diverse range of lytosoamines and related analytes certainly have different requirements for their respective analytical methods, although they share one common aspect in that the developed methods need to be highly sensitive in order to detect these analytes of interest, which are usually present at very low levels. With the expansion of lytosomine analytes, the analytical platform required for their analysis are greatly evolving and expanding. With respect to instrumentation, GCMAS, which has been the primary technique for simple lytosomine analysis, was initially the main platform for the analysis of NDMA, NDEA, and other simple lytosomines. LCMS was next utilized, first to address some unmet needs by GCMAS and subsequently became a common platform. With the necessity of analyzing nitrosoamine drug substance-related impurities, LCMS will certainly be utilized in more applications. Not surprisingly, the mass spectrometer is the detector of choice as an analytical platform due to its high sensitivity and selectivity. Use of a triple quadruple with an MRM scan mode is certainly the most common and the popular mass spectrometric quantitation approach. Long considered as an invaluable tool for identification and characterization, especially for large biological molecules, high-resolution mass spectrometry has not typically been utilized for quantitation of small molecules. Its use for lytosoamine analysis illustrates its advantage of not only being a characterization tool, but also a suitable quantitation tool and it reflects the progress in using the high-resolution mass spectrometer's accessibility and the suitability for more routine and regulated testing. The use of internal standards for quantitation purposes is a staple for mass spectrometry-based small molecule quantitation. With lytosomy analysis, the use of an external standard has also become more acceptable and common. The four analytical procedures included in USP 1469 for lytosomine analysis are a good illustration of the analytical platform's expansion. Each of these four procedures is unique in its separation techniques, mass spectrometer detector, or quantitation approach, and exemplify the diverse analytical platforms for lytosomine analysis in pharmaceuticals. The purpose, analytical targets, and the design of analytical methods are deeply affected by regulatory policies. 
The FDA has published the guidance and information for the industry regarding nitro soil contamination and additional documents by other regulatory agencies, as well as USP's general information, have shaped the scope of analytical methods for nitro soil analysis. The requirement for risk assessment and the confirmation testing imply the need of highly selective and sensitive methods and the acceptable intake value of lactose amines defined in the guidance determines the minimum LOQ or LOD that a particular method needs to achieve. Analytical methods for lactose amine analysis can be susceptible to many pitfalls as they are designed to detect and quantitate very low level of analytes in relatively uh, complex matrix. These obstacles can arise in the development and performance of method, thereby leading to inaccurate measurements and unfounded decisions. Having a good understanding of sample preparation, separation, detection, and quantitation, and knowing well how these aspects affect each other is critical to develop a suitable and robust method. A few examples from our experience or literature will be provided next to underscore the importance of a holistic approach for method development. The first example concerns the choice of a technique for separation detection. GCMS is the most common technique for simple lactosomine analysis. However, its wide application does not necessitate its applicability to all samples. Since GCMS relies on high temperature to vaporize and introduce analytes for separation detection. Some APIs, like relative in here, may undergo thermal degradation to form NDMA as a result of this heating process. Applications of GCMS to analyze NDMA in relative in therefore would result in the report of artificially high levels of NDMA as shown by the example here. The NDMA measured with headspace GCMS was over 2000 ppm compared to sub ppm with LCMS. So in this case, although both GCMS and LCMS are capable technique for NDMA analysis, LCMS is a more suitable because it does not involve a heating process until after the separation of relative from NDMA. The second example concerns the lack of selectivity from instrument parameter settings. Mass spectrometers as detectors have the great benefit of adding additional selectivity through mechanisms such as multiple reaction monitoring, high resolution, or accurate mass, or their combinations, and reduce the dependency on chromatographic separation to achieve the needed selectivity. Still, the resemblance of lactosamine to other molecules in terms of chemical structure and molecular mass could compromise the selectivity of the mass spectrometer if not appropriately handled. The example here is the application of LC high resolution mass spectrometry for the analysis of NDMA in metformin drug product, which may also contain dimethylformide or DMF as a residual solvent and the DMF shares similar mass and molecular structure as NDMA. With moderate LC separation, the method depends on the high mass resolving power of the mass spec to separate the nitrogen 15 isotopic peak of DMF from NDMA with an appropriate mass extraction window to achieve the needed selectivity for accurate quantitation of NDMA. A lower mass resolving power setting or wide mass extraction window would lead to the overestimation of NDMA as shown in the, in the bar graph where a private company reported results represented by the blue bar, which were generally much higher than the FDA's as represented by red bars for the same samples. Although sample preparation is a critical component of an analytical method, its importance is often neglected. The two figures here are from a 2021 publication reporting the finding of the formation of NDMA in dichrome uh, methane, or DCM, a common extraction solvent for simple lactose amines for GC mass analysis. 
when evaluating the GCMS method for the determination of NDMA in metformin. The authors found that the dimethylamine, the precursor of NDMA, which is also an impurity in metformin, can react with trace amount of nitride when dichromethane was used as an extraction solvent. Both of the figures here show the difference of the NDMA levels in the samples extracted only by dichromethane only, and the same sensing sample extracted with water wash or addition of scavenger following the DCM extraction, in which it was concluded that a scavenger or water wash can mitigate the risk of nitrosoamine formation in sample preparation. What could lie ahead for nitrosoamine analytical method? Here are a couple, so, a couple of my thoughts on the matter. First, with the increasing need of risk assessment and the interest in investigating cause and mitigating risk, there will be demand for highly selective and sensitive methods which will continue to expand the use of mass spectrometry in pharmaceutical analysis, especially LCMS. For example, an LCMS method was recently developed in our lab to screen nitride level in different excipients and drug products. LCMS is not the usual technique of choice for nitride analysis, but during the course of method development, it was found that LCMS had the advantage of higher sensitivity and flexibility for sample preparation compared to ion chromatography, the conventional and common technique for nitride analysis. Currently, nitrosomine analysis mostly follows the approach of targeted analysis. Because of the low level presence of this group of uh, um, analytes. By this approach, the identity of lytrosomine needs to be known first in order to develop a method to find it in a sample. Will it be beneficial if we adopt a non targeted approach in some cases? By a non targeted approach, we do not need to have a prior knowledge of the lytrosomine, and we may be able to simply screen a sample to look for any nitrosomines, find them, and determine their identities, and use that information for risk assessment. Moving to this approach may still require additional enabling technique and the development of new technology, uh, methodolo methodologies. With that, I would conclude my presentation with my thanks to the workshop organizer for the opportunity and my uh, OTR colleagues who have been working together uh, on nitrosoamine projects for the past few years. Thank you for your attention.